What is up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics and today is going to be a leg workout and I already prepared my intro workout shakes right here. Always taking two shakes with me because halfway through the workout I already drink one and then I have another one left. So what do I put in there? Well, if you watched my intra workout suggestion video, you know that there are two juices, natural juices, that I recommend. One of them is pomegranate juice. So I use the pomegranate juice, which has a higher concentration of carbohydrates naturally during the heavier days, such as legs and back. And on a chest day, I like to use beetroot juice. If you want to know the exact benefits, check out that intra workout video I posted on my channel. But for some short pointers, it gives you an enormous pump. It's good for heart health. And it's, uh, you know, increasing nitric oxide production, just all beneficial towards the workout, performance, and health. So, what else do I put in there? Uh, let me see, right here, I have, of course, the EAAs by Jack Factory. And I put about 10 grams in each of these bottles. You can see the color here, that's all from the pomegranate juice, but the flavoring, you know, that is not the greatest if you don't put anything else in there. So this has the flavor strawberry lemonade. So if you mix that with natural juices or concentrates like that, it actually does taste amazing. Also put some creatine in there, some L-carnitine uh, in there. Both of those actually, uh, because of the contractile tissue working during the workout, they will be pushed into the muscles more easily. And it's been proven that creatine and L-carnitine both uh, are delivered more easily to the muscle cells if you work out. So yeah, I'm excited. And what do you think about my new setup right here? Two screens. This is pretty much my office here at the gym. We're almost done at our new home. At the end of this week and a weekend, we'll actually uh, get over there and uh, order a very big desk for my studio, which will be in the attic, very large attic, so I have a very large screen there. So this, that one right there is my old screen I used to have in our old apartment. You can see you still need to level them a little more equally, but that'll happen very soon. But having two screens here is very nice. The workout plans on here, the emails on there, for example, multitasking. Being able to do that makes my job a lot easier. I've been quite busy this week, though, and all the other weeks because of where the moving process, ordering stuff, uh, bringing presents for appointments, etc., etc. But uh, after this week, guys, things will go change for the better. Whoa, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't in focus. I hope that wasn't the entire time, but anyway, let's go train some legs. All right, guys, getting into this leg workout. Already did some laying leg curls. Uh, I think three or four warm ups, progressively decreasing the reps, but increasing the weight, letting the muscle get plenty of blood in there, and getting used to the weight and the increments in weight, but not taking anything away to reduce the effectiveness and the power I can deliver in the working set. So this will be working set number one with uh, 55 kilos. Let's see how many reps I can do, at least in between eight and 12 reps, and then I'll be happy. And we're actually going to do two more working sets after that. And then after the third working set, we're going to do myo reps, or a very simply, you know, a very short rest pause set. So you basically, whenever your muscles uh, are very filled up with lactic acid after the last set, you end the set when you can't go anymore, and then you wait until the uh, lactic acid uh, is gone, and the acid feeling in your muscles, which may take like five seconds or so, maybe 10 seconds, and you go again, and then 
critical distiller again and then once more so hitting like two extra mini sets after already hitting failure after the third working set. So why am I implementing this much volume for this exercise? Because this is an isolation movement. You can do this with a great stimulus to the muscle with a little fatigue overall, but also because it's my weak muscle group and the hamstrings need to increase in size and killing them with a lot of volume for me has without has been what has always worked for the rest of my muscles as well, but I need to increase the uh, you know the focus and intensity on those weaker muscle groups for sure, without it impacting over fatigue. So that's why I stick to low volume on the chest, for example, to make sure there's enough left to kill the legs. Anyway, let's get started. Alrighty, so let's get this leg workout started. As always, starting with the hamstrings, the laying leg curl. If you watch my videos more often, especially the leg workouts, you know that I like to do the laying leg curl first, pretty much no matter what kind of leg workout it is, because my hamstrings are my weak point in my legs. But there are more options than only the laying leg curl if you want to do it at your gym, if you have a seated leg curl with full range of motion, that would objectively be even better for most people because you can get a more superior stretch on the seated leg curl. If you look at my form right here, I am trying my best to get the uh, most possible stretching fibers in the hamstrings. My lower back and the glutes are being involved just a little bit. But to me, when you're at an advanced level, you can choose between absolute 100% perfect form or 95% perfect and letting other muscles help just a tiny bit in order to increase the feel of the exercise, the mind-muscle connection, the squeeze of the muscle, getting into a deeper stretch, stuff like this. It comes intuitively to you after you've been training for almost 15 years in my case. So... Sometimes when the form is 100% absolutely spot on, if you're an advanced level, you might get stuck sooner than if you put a little bit of natural movement into the movement itself. That really depends on your experience level and kind of, you know, body you basically have, your anatomy. But to me, some movements, like for example, the lat pull down, just swinging my upper body a tiny bit back and forth allows me for a better stretch and a contraction. More about this in a separate video. If you have trouble with your form, obviously stick to full range of motion and perfect form regardless before you start thinking around with different kinds of executions. So by the way, this last working set right here, I'm doing two Mayo rep sets, which I'll explain very soon. All right, guys, the last, well, one of the last warm-ups we're going to do on this belt squat. So this is the next movement. The first combat movement, my all-time favorite one, the ATX belt squat. Now, let me show you the uh, execution of this exercise right now. So those last Mayo rep sets, the Mayo part stands for Mayo fibrils or myofibrillar. I can't really pronounce this, but basically it stands for muscle fiber growth. So those extra sets cause extra growth in the muscles because those sets are close to failure and those kinds of sets create growth. So as you can see, I'm going pretty deep, stretching out the glutes, the quads, and a little bit of the hamstrings. So here I show how, how deep I like to go on the ATX belt squat, so as deep as I possibly can to stretch out the glutes because that is what I'm trying to target with this movement. Obviously, whenever you're doing a compound leg movement like this one, you target the quads, you target the entire legs, but your leg stance can change. And that is the big benefit compared to a regular back squat. With a back squat, you can stand wider or closer, but due to ankle flexibility, you're very limited in there anyway. So what you can then do is stick to an ATX belt squat, and the belt squat will actually cause you or allow you to put your feet more forward, allowing for a bigger stretch. This will be heavy. 
So yes, that will be heavy and the stretch will be phenomenal. Now the kind of stretch I'm talking about is in the glutes. From this angle, you can see it very clearly. As we go all the way down, look at where the glutes are. The glutes are literally being stretched as much as possible before going back up. If you look uh, at my knee sleeves that I'm wearing, you can see that my calf is hitting my hamstring, or my hamstring is hitting my calf. Regardless of the order of how I want to say it, the limit of the range of motion is caused by that. The further that you put your feet on this platform, the deeper you can actually go, because then your hamstring won't hit the calf as soon. The hitting of the muscles at the bottom will be delayed because there's more space if you put your feet forward and that extra space allows for more stretch in the glutes which is what i'm going for when i watched my back poses at the mr olympia last year i was surprised by my hamstring development but disappointed with the glute development because this was the best shape i've ever achieved and then you can see the truth of how much muscle mass you really have and you know overall i just want more muscle mass but especially in the legs and most of all in the glutes the glutes guys you know in classic physique normally a few years ago with those bigger trunks you would hit hide your glutes and they were not important but now Nowadays, pretty much regardless of the class, except for men's physique, the glutes are just as important as open bodybuilding. So you gotta have bigger, more striated, defined glutes nowadays to place higher. And that is something that I've been seeing in my back poses. The back is strong, the arms are strong. Now even the hamstrings aren't a weak point really from the back, but the glutes are. So sticking to a movement like this, really does help make the glutes grow so no matter what your weak point is on any squat you can do go as deep as you possibly can because the deeper you go the more of a stretch is created in all of the muscles and a load on the muscle when it's stretched that causes the most muscle growth so if you do cheat curls for example or cheat reps and you don't go all the way down or you don't stretch the muscle all the way it doesn't matter how heavy you go you simply won't grow the muscle as much as when you go all the way down lower the weight to accommodate you being able to go all the way down and then you will see unprecedented growth which i am seeing in my legs now i've been in this off-season lean bulking for about four weeks now maybe you know three to four weeks and things are moving quite nicely still starting off quite slow I wanted to make sure not to gain any unnecessary fat, but fat will have to be gained eventually. But for now, things are still looking great. Strength is going up, muscle mass is increasing, and the conditioning is still uh, pretty much there, which I'm very happy about. And as you can see, I'm doing three working sets on the exercises that I think is important for my development. So I want to put all of my fatigue points into those movements. So the belt squat simply feels the best, it targets the legs only, it targets the glutes really, really well, and no actual loading at all, so no lower back being messed up at all, no matter how heavy you go on there. So three working sets, the first working set is the heaviest one, the second is a medium weight, and the last one is a relatively lighter weight, allowing for more reps and different rep ranges. And now we are going to do the leg press. Now, it's hard to compare your own leg press to this one. This one feels very heavy, in my opinion. So this 250 kilo, I used to do a lot more here. But if you do it correctly, go nice and slow all the way down until you feel that your butt is about to leave the seat. Then you should push back up. To me, this is very important because I injured my lower back, I think, two years ago on this exact leg press by going like 400 kilos, but I dropped uh, the you know the sled way too low, way too quickly, and my butt came off the platform and my spine was under a lot of pressure from all of that weight. So yes, even though you think the leg press doesn't put any pressure or stress on the lower back, it definitely is um, 
you know, potentiating a lower back injury because it does put the spine under a lot of pressure if you go way too deep. So this is pretty much my full range of motion for this particular movement. And I'm going to increase this range of motion over time by stretching out the glutes and the hamstrings and performing those stretches um, you know, a couple of times a week which I'll also make a video about because if you have shorter, tighter muscles, that can create a domino effect and maybe injure a muscle that is, or a, or a you know, tendon or a joint that is not related to the uh, short muscles directly at all, but because of the chain that every muscle is connected to, somewhere in the chain, the weak link will be injured possibly. And that's what's happening to my lower back quite often. So having longer muscle bellies or at least less tight muscle bellies will help for sure. And then something new, the leg extensions. Wait, what? Leg extensions, that's not a new exercise. No, it's one of the oldest movements in the book. But I used to do the leg extensions after the laying leg curls before the compounds. And my new way of doing them is after the compounds. I have to thank John Jewett for this partially because he said that doing leg extensions before the compounds could be a waste of energy because then your quads have already taken a lot of beating and will take away from the load you can use on the compounds. And we all know the true growth in your legs comes from compound movements such as a squat, the hack squat, the leg press, etc. So if you're not able to go as heavy on those, you will limit the stimulus to the muscles if you do leg extensions first. The only benefit of doing leg extensions first is to warm the knees, but then you can still do leg extensions uh, just to warm up, not, a, not as an exercise at all to go to failure, but simply to get blood in the muscle, and then do the compounds, and then do a serious leg extension exercise with sets to failure, like here. The other benefit is you can't go as heavy on the leg extension either, so there's not as much stress on the knee, while this exercise is still very, very important, in my opinion, to a developed part of the quad that won't be developed if you don't do the leg extensions. So always keep the leg extensions in, guys. Never skip them. And this is the last movement. Camera died, so I had to do it with my phone. The toe press or the calf raise on the leg press, however you want to call it. So this is my second working set. I'm slowly ramping up volume in my calf movements in the week once more because I miss having very dominant calves. I used to have bigger calves than this, especially in comparison to my upper legs. Now they are better proportioned, but I still want to make those calves grow because it's a shame if they were a dominant part before to not make them dominant again. So that's why. Okay, guys, my actual camera died on me, but uh, I finished the training. Last exercise was the calf press or the toe press on the leg press. And uh, I just cooked up that meal right there. Cream of rice, 200 grams. Also some whey isolate. Actually, let me show you from up close. So here we have it, 200 grams of cream of rice. I always do this after leg day, uh, kind of like a uh, super saturation day for the carbohydrates after legs. Uh, that, what you can see right there, is some white chocolate from the brand Tony Chocolonely, which is like white chocolate cherry and something like a special flavor. Is that the best option post-workout? No. Is it incredibly delicious and makes it much more easy to eat this meal? Yes. So lots of people ask me, do you cheat? I don't really cheat, but if I do have something other than what's on the plan, it's something like this, like 20 grams of uh, a different kind of chocolate every single time. The way I said in here, 60 grams of this authentic isolate by Jack Factory. Also very delicious. And yeah, that's pretty much everything that's in this meal. So let's enjoy this. And of course, guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the discount codes for the supplements of Jack Factory down in the description. And also VintageJacks.com for all the clothing I was wearing in this video and a lot more. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to stay golden.